Let's continue to have that conversation about what exactly constitutes a bomb cyclone. Meteorologist Britta Merwin joining us. I mean, it's not just fun to say bomb cyclone, right? <laughs> right. It, it sounds made up. Uh, bombogenesis is one of the things we like to talk about. Again, Probably you say that. One of the that, coolest buzzwords you'll come across really is. in weather. And people think you're making it up, but it's not. It's yes. a meteorological process and a very fascinating one to watch. And as Stephen mentioned earlier, Britta, this one actually just about tripled the criteria <laughs> for undergoing um, bombogenesis. Impressive, yeah. uh, to say the least. And for many folks that are watching us right now, I mean, given the time, it's a lot of East Coasters. And, and East Coast people, they look at this West Coast weather and they're like, whoa, well, what is that? Guess what? You actually are more familiar with this than you think. So if you live in the Northeast, think about this like a nor'easter. If you're watching us from Florida, you can think about it as a hurricane. It forms in a different way and it's fueled by something else. You know, a hurricane is feeding off of the warm water of the Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico. What happens with bombogenesis, and when we're talking about these deep non-tropical lows, it's actually a temperature difference that is causing this growth, the clashing of warm and cold air. But what we've seen happen with this West Coast system is impressive. I mean, it's all over social media because of how quickly this deepened. You can kind of correlate it to rapid intensification with a hurricane, just giving respect for all the weather enthusiasts that are watching us. Of course, course, it's being powered by a different setup. That temperature difference, the presence of fronts, very different than what we see with a hurricane. But the power is similar. When you talk about the pressure that we've seen within this particular storm, of course, hurricanes rated with the Saffir-Simpson scale, which is just off the wind speeds. But if you correlate the pressure differences, this would be the pressure that you would see in a Category 3 hurricane. I mean, we're talking about a very powerful area of low pressure, despite the fact that this is an extra tropical, a non-tropical system. So for this process to actually happen, of course, there is a benchmark that must occur. You need 24 millibar drop in the pressure within 24 hours. As you guys pointed out, this storm smashed that. I mean, it is impressive how fast the pressure dropped. And as that pressure drops, well, the winds, they increase. We've already clocked hurricane force winds across the state of Washington because of this storm. Mount Rainier saw a wind gust of 77 miles per hour in the overnight hours, and that doesn't even account for the gap winds, which are almost impossible to clock because we just don't have anemometers and all these crazy nooks and crannies that are present within the storm path. And with these powerful areas of low pressure, sometimes we get atmospheric rivers back to back and that's what's going to be happening this go around we have the bomb cyclone today tomorrow an atmospheric river that continues for northern california and for folks that live on the west coast they know the atmospheric river scale it is normal jargon to hear people in Northern California talk about an AR4 and AR5 being pointed at them, and they know that that is bad news. Now, the first two categories are actually beneficial. Keep in mind the West Coast has a wet season. They have a dry season. They depend on the rain and the snow that they will pick up on from now all the way through March to get them through next summer. And we've had two prolific winter seasons. Our last two wet seasons have been very beneficial with ARs and also bombs cyclones. Do we pull it off for a third year in a row? We'll see if we can get that lucky. But they do come in with a price tag. There's no way around that. So these atmospheric rivers that push in, last year we saw two of them at an extreme level, being an AR4, an AR5, and that always correlates not only with wind damage potential, but really the <laughs> epic amount of flooding that can happen. I mean, we already have, you know, a level four out of four alert for flash flooding in Northern California that was pegged three days in advance for yeah. coastal areas. Then you take into account what's going to happen in the Sacramento Valley, easily could see five to eight inches of rain there. That's all going to go into the American River, the Sacramento River, and it is going to cause a flood concern. Yeah, we'll continue the conversation with the atmospheric river in terms of the, the bomb cyclone. Remarkable to see play out in the northern Pacific, and to your point, a very accurate forecast for an extreme event, and mm -hmm. we'll continue to see it because um, it's going to stay unsettled across the West Coast, Britta. So thank you for joining us with that one. Thank you.